Hey, hey everybody, welcome back to a new episode of Entropia Content. Now today is a little bit of a somber episode for me because today would be been Beamer's 95th birthday. I was just reading his Facebook page and some of his family is wishing him messages to be on the grave. It's really hard to believe that he's gone. It still seems like yesterday that I was talking to him. Oh man. But yeah, I'll try not to get too down the dumps. It was nice. The viewer gave me an early, early birthday gift yesterday while I was done recording. But I figured I would bring it back. They gave me a, a Dragonfly helicopter, which that was super nice. I've never had one of these helicopters before, so I'll have to check it out, what the fuel consumption's like. <whistles> Holy, pricey fuel consumption. So it's normally when I look for vehicles to travel around, I look for something that's cheap on the oil. So it's a little bit on the higher end, but still a nice looking vehicle. And they also gave me some oil to go with it. So that was cool. So right now I'll put that stuff in storage. And no, uh, I do trust the viewer's opinion on uh, walking around less in the game. He said it would be nice to see faster action. The only thing I was saying to that is I do like to do rock runs where I pick up fruit and stones. So I can't always be doing fast travel, but I'll try to travel faster more, off more often. I was drinking booze last night, so I got the hiccups today. <laughs> Went a little bit overkill on the vodka and, and Pepsi. It's a decent mix though. I liked it. Now I found my body felt better. It's like my body had been kind of feeling down the dumps, weak in energy and everything in the past week or two. Ever since so, since I started getting wasted again. So I needed something to help get my body to feel more on track where the energy levels are more stable. And yeah, it seems like the booze did it. Seemed to sleep a little bit better. Feel more awake today than I did yesterday. Yeah, some more people are messaging me, adding me as friends in the on Facebook and in the game. Nice to meet everyone. Oh yeah, some people are asking for reminders. When is the birthday party? It's December 2nd. That's uh, this coming up, uh, not this Wednesday, but yeah, not this Wednesday, not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that. So it's still a ways to go into December. But yeah, I'll keep reminding everyone as the show gets closer. And sorry, I'd, I'd give a specific time, but... My family's going to be doing birthday stuff for me at like random times that day. So I won't know what time I can record, but I'll try to at least narrow it down to December 2nd. It might be during the morning show, might be in the evening show, I'm not too sure. Man, I'm going to have to try some dry skin cream on my nose. It's like, man, it's itching me so much this week. I hate dry skin. Oh, these days, well, that's one good thing about the lockdown, is I noticed more itches were going around than they used to be in the old days. I think it's because people weren't being sterile enough. People are catching lice or different parasites. So I got to the point where I was taking a bath or soaking myself in permethrin at least once uh, every other month or so to try to make sure I'm sterile. <laughs> so that's the one thing I liked about the pandemic. At least itches and everything should be spreading a lot less. People aren't touching each other, randomly hugging strangers, won't be catching insects all over. Not that there's anything wrong with catching insects, it happens to everyone, but 
Man, I hate using that permethrin cream. It's not good for people with a history of prostate cancer and their families. So I can't really be using it all the time. If it wasn't so badly toxic, I'd probably be using it once a month. Now another thing I've been using these days is sulfur soap and that helps a little bit with dry skin. Invented by the Roman legions, right? Now a friend of mine gave me some of his homegrown. Man, did it ever turn out good. Better than any of mine. I don't know how he got the taste, he got the crystal, he got the consistency when drying it. He did a very good job. It's funny, I've almost talked to all my friends and tried all their homegrown and all everyone's came out better than mine. I just don't have a green thumb. I can grow bigger nugs. I can grow faster nugs. But something about how I'm growing them, they just don't taste very good. Which sucks because taste is the number one thing I look for in weed. Now the next strain I'm growing, I think I might go with AK-47. All kinds 47. Seems like a popular strain. They called it mediocre for growers. I'm hoping to find a nug type that I could grow that had more, what is it, bud rot resistance and good taste. I, mean, I don't really care about crystal content or how strong a weed it is, as long as it's average strength. I don't need some super 30% potency weed. Most of the weed I grow is around 20%, so I'm sure it's pretty good. I tried ordering the, the highest percentage weed that you could get from the Ontario government website and their strongest kind turned out to be MK Ultra, which I found kind of ironic because MK Ultra is the name of a named after a government program where the government started drugging its citizens without telling them and experimenting on them using their own people as guinea pigs. And then that experiment was called MK Ultra. And then fast forward years in the future, the government's selling mind control drugs and they name it MK Ultra. <laughs> Go figure, history repeats. Alright, last night's crafting run, the returns were just ridiculously high. So I had a feeling today's would be a little bit lower. Because I don't know, I feel bad for how much I looted yesterday. It's like I'm robbing the place. This is 90 clicks, no blueprints. It's not a good sign. Now we're under the 2,000 print clicks. Now I was thinking maybe today I'd go over some of the stories about how I met Beamer. Now Beamer, he used to hang out at Twin Peaks. And Twin Peaks back in the day was the main trade spot in Calypso. I guess it still is a little bit, but not as big as it used to be. So yeah, he would come there and he would buy and sell items. I think he was mainly going there to sell items because he would loot them. Big depositor. So anyways, I was already working Twin Peaks at the time. I was a sweat reseller. So what I was doing was buying sweat for, I think, what was it? One pet a K. Or 1.1. Or no, this was back when it was over two. It was two pet a K. That's what I was buying it for. 
and then uh, I would buy up as much sweat as I could at Twin and other places where people are selling sweat and then I would resell it for one point or two point three alright it's an armament device part one that's a pretty good one so anyways yeah I was doing lots of the buying and reselling of sweat it reached the point and that was the days when I was buying up to one million sweat and then I would resell it all in one trade one M sweat sold buy it for one or two ped K and sell it for two point three so it was a decent amount of profits per sale but anyways yeah so I would run into Beamer because he was buying or selling his sweat and he was always thanking me for being a consistent sweat buyer and then yeah that's when we started hanging out and I asked him if he ever wanted help with healing so that he could hunt some bigger mobs and he was like yeah he actually needed that so I was his personal healer for quite a few healing adventures or hunting adventures. <laughs> now that's what I learned as being a healer for Beamer that what was the healing device that he used to get me to use for him? I can't remember if I kept it or did I give it back to him? Probably gave it back to him. Yeah, I wish I would have kept one of the healers that, well, he let me borrow it, so I guess it's better I didn't keep it. But yeah, he used to give me this one, and we would do some healing, and the healing was getting pricey for me, because not only was, uh, would the healing tool decay, but then I'd have my armor decay, and all these other decays. So the, what Beamer did to be nice, he's like, hey, I'll help you with the decay and he'll just repair the healing tool for me over and over. I was like, wow, that's awesome. Now I can be like a healer and just keep healing forever because you're paying the, the decay. And he's like, yeah, that's a good trade. So I was his personal healer and he would pay for the decay. And then he started splitting the loot with me too. I was like, man, that was amazing. Getting loot split, just having to heal. That was amazing rushes. And Beamer would also give me rides around in space. He liked doing the taxi work. He liked to do dog fights with the pirates. Yeah, and he would tell me all the stories about what it was like to live in the old days. About what it was like to go through world wars and what was it, Spanish flu. He even lost family members to that. Yeah, so I definitely learned a lot from him. I was pretty fortunate for quite a few years. I think I was hanging out with the oldest player in Entropia. Maybe they're somewhat older, but... Now, when I first met him and he was in his 80s, I remember his 90th birthday party. That was a pretty big one. He started to realize that he was getting close to the end when he turned 90 because he's like, holy shit, like 90s is probably where it's going to end. But I don't know, for how active he was still traveling, I thought he still had at least another five years or so. It's kind of a shock to me that he died. I should have seen it coming because he was telling me that he'd been fighting chronic pneumonia for, I don't know, almost a year. Where he would take pills for it, it would go away a little, but then just come back once he stopped taking the pills. And he was still doing bus trips, he went on a big casino trip forget I think his last casino trip was a bit of a nightmare he said now it's a shame he used to always talk about one day he'd come up to Canada and visit I was always hoping to get my cottage or places up north fixed up so I can invite people over and I always kept failing I don't know, I always think about building a pool house here where I'm staying now, but it's only a temporary place, so I should really focus more on getting a place built that's mine, that it's not temporary. So I think I'm going to do that more. I don't know, I started to talk to a few different people or they can build garages and shit, so that's the, the help I need. If anyone can come to Northern Ontario and help build a garage. I 
I don't know, I think my garage that I have right now is 20 by 20. Animals got to live in the roof and such, so I really got to gut the entire thing. Put a new roof. I might strip it right down to the frame. And I was thinking, man, if I strip the garage right down to the frame, at that point, I might as well just upgrade the frame. Make it a little bit nicer of a garage, maybe. We'll see. Now, what I would like to do, like the my neighbor across the street, it's like he went a little bit cuckoo, but one of his inventions in the process is actually pretty good. What he did is he took, a, you know how those uh, stow-and-go seats from minivans, how the back seats come out and such? So he took the back seats out of a minivan, and he climbed up onto the roof of his house, and he, he hammered in wood frames to make like a, a, a some sort of a base that he could wedge the, the seats from his minivan up onto the roof of his house. And it's a little bit on the steep side, so I was surprised he, he did that successfully. But anyways, he rigged up some ladder contraption so that he can climb up onto the roof of his house more red availably and sit up on that chair. And then I happened to look at what what's he's looking at from that chair and it, there's a holy mountain near where we live. I actually bought the house because it's the closest house I could get near the holy mountain. Alright, PRX Limited. So what he did is he angled his chair so that he sits right in the shadow from the equinox of, of the holy mountain. I was thinking, man, that's pretty intense. So I don't know if this guy's like really into stargazing or mountain gazing or whatever it is, but to go to that extreme where you, you put up a rig on your house like that. So I was thinking, I don't want to go to that extreme where I have like chairs from minivans attached to a roof. But I was thinking maybe what I'll do is make some sort of balcony, right? Like a legit balcony, like a deck sort of thing. Off maybe the second floor. So maybe that's what I'll do. Is I'll build the upgraded garage and then I'll make a deck so that people can sit up and gaze the, the holy mountain. Yeah, the holy mountain is pretty impressive. It's a sight to be seen. Yeah, the first time I saw it, actually, it horrified me. I was like, holy fuck, this is way bigger than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Like, I don't know, I'd seen 10, 20 story buildings before. I've been to the top of the CN Tower now, but... Being on that mountain was pretty close. It's big. The only drawbacks I have to building that place up north is there is a little bit of cultural wars where French and English people fight each other and First Nations people fight everyone too but you never know going to places where there's a little bit of conflict like that sometimes it can toughen you up right shouldn't be such a sissy always wanting to live in a perfect environment where everyone gets along it's nice to have a little bit of conflict who knows, maybe the conflict won't even be so bad. Some of my buddies came up to the bar, or came up north with me and they went to the bars to party. And they said even though there were some conflicting people hanging out at the bars, that everyone got wasted and had a good time together. So I was like, yeah, next time I go back up north I'm going to bring him and he says he knows a bunch of people up there now. That he had a blast drinking in the bars. Which I was kind of happy for him because I was a little bit concerned. I was like, here I was bringing this guy from the city. Well, technically he's not really a city kid. He grew up in, uh, what was it, with gypsies in Eastern Europe. <laughs> so, I don't know if he did grow up with them or maybe you know, his family had already separated from that at that point when he came to Canada. But he said he had some gypsy background. So I imagine it must have been kind of interesting. Now, so to take this guy from from Eastern Europe and then bring him up north in Canada and release him into the bars in a small town, see what he gets into. I was worried he was going to be getting into fistfights because he likes to debate people a lot and always really intense debates too. So <laughs> philosophical topics and everything. 
Now I wish I could get him on the internet sometimes, but then again he's probably better off not recording what he says. A lot of it's controversial. <laughs> And the funniest thing too is he approaches everything like an academic so he'll talk about like really offensive topics but just from like the pure academic side of it that people are like oh man you're so like mean and he's like well, I'm not really trying to be mean I'm just talking about the actual facts of the matter <laughs> yeah we actually had some pretty good debates too he likes to talk about world politics and stuff too. It was funny, he doesn't believe in like religion or reincarnation or anything and I don't usually either to a certain degree. I'm more into the universe or holographic universe theory. I believe more about that than I would like some magical sky fairies or something. No, but I was checking into different philosophers from like the old days, controversial ones that were nearly burned at the stake for debating too much openly. So then I was looking at the statues of different ones. I was like, what the fuck? The one statue looks just like my friend. And I was reading his description and he argues just like my friend. So I'm like, I got to show him that one day. I'm like, man, I know you don't believe in reincarnation, but you got to check this out. <laughs> There's an old guy from like the, well, I don't even know what days those would have been, like biblical days. <laughs> he looks just like you and he talks just like you. <laughs> it's funny because they're like identical twins. I was like, holy fuck. It's not like the statues have like a vague resemblance. It's like they, they look identical. <laughs> Now, I think I was going to add it to my favorites list on Facebook so I could remember or remind myself who it was to tell them. But then I lost the link. Now, I don't know what happened with my Google address bar. You know that little address bar that comes with Google at the top and how if you format your computer you can save the address bars because it's linked to your account. Well, at one point I had two Gmail accounts. One I was using for work stuff and one I was using for just personal. So what happened was, is when I would link back and forth on those accounts, it would end up logging in and out of my Google address bar. So sometimes I was like, fuck, if I need my addresses, I'd have to switch accounts. And that wasn't even so bad, but at one point Google started to get the two mixed up. Like when I'd be logged into one, it would save it to the other. I was like, what the fuck, right? And then eventually it started to get mixed up so bad that it was just not saving them at all. So it's like when I would log into either account, it wouldn't be in them. I was like, well, where the fuck is it saving them to? So that's the adventures I've been having with, with Google and trying to get shit to work properly. Can't save anything. It's not good for my memory not to be able to save shit. No pain, no gain. <laughs> now today we did have a big storm roll in. So it's pouring rain outside. I'm not going to bring my camera gear outside into the pouring rain. thinking today is the day after a pretty big drinking binge so I probably should stay in and rest then after that I think I might try the biking and attaching the camera I don't know if it really will be possible to ride with no hands with it rigged to the because it might throw off the balance too much But if I had to guess, there is a small chance of pulling it off. Alright, let's check how many prints we've gotten. 
I haven't been watching very closely. I think we got an Armin imprint. Was that it? We got ornament, chair frame, a more PRX Limited. But still, this was a pretty hurting unit crafting run. Alright, let's get the hell out of this one. Let's try a different one. Hey, it looks like we got some players here. Gesso Tan, True Pirate. I was trying to remember who it was that gave me that stuff yesterday. Yeah, here is the, the nice player. If anyone who is wondering who is the nice player that gave me that cool stuff, it was Sergeant Vogel Red Star. He says I'm butchering his name, but it's nice of me to try at least. <laughs> so maybe I should just call him Sergeant, or maybe that's the part I'm butchering. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's hit up Camp Crunk. I want to see my Christmas decorations. I forgot I was going to make an episode to make the thumbnail of the Christmas decorations for my shop. And made the fucking decorations and forgot to do the thumbnail. Or I think I did the thumbnail and just named it something else. Jeez, everything's loading slow. What I don't get is I have to hold the other key. It's like I accidentally held V instead of O, and it actually works better. Oh, holding camera mode. Oh, I don't even have to hold it. It's just a camera mode. Sweet. Alright, so we'll make this the Christmas. I'll put Christmas across the top. And we'll wave to. <laughs> we'll try one more wave. I don't think that worked too well. <laughs> Alright, so we're all set for Christmas. Yeah, so if anyone wants to find me on my birthday, come by at Camp Kronk here on December 2nd. And if you're looking for something you can do in the meantime while you wait for me, there's these zombies. If you kill them, It'll unlock some of the AI to attack you, these AI here, and if you get 40 of them, you get a really good reward. Like I'm talking like making cash reward. But there's a trick, killing the zombies takes quite a bit of ammo, so if you can just kill the leftover AI that people trigger and don't use anymore, then you'll be able to complete the mission and make a good profit. Just check into my archive if you want to see the AI mission and how to profit doing it. And what else is there to do? You could do some crafting, you could go shopping on the auction, and you can check out Big Daddy's shop. Big Daddy has the one of the best shops in all of Rocktropia. So there's definitely some things you can do while you're waiting for me and my birthday party such and maybe we can talk to other players, hang out at the around the zombies. Now, I was thinking the biggest thing to do at my birthday party will be just hanging out and chatting with other players. Hopefully there's some people to talk to. Who knows, maybe I'll even take a live Skype caller. I'd really like to try that. I don't know, what was it? OBS had some issues where it didn't sync very well with Skype. So you couldn't share the screen. But then someone came up with a patch for OBS that you could install on the side and it would make it work for Skype. So you could share the screen with your viewers or for your caller. Like that's what I like to do is when I do podcasts with shows and guests. I like to be able to share the screen with them. So we can talk about different images and show the screen. 
so viewers can see it and so the guests can see it and hosts can see it all in real time so that's one of the reasons I needed that from Skype oh fuck I'm not even crafting piece of garbage it's like what the fuck it's taking so long yeah, but yeah, before we begin this big crafting mission, let's get a quick message from the sponsor. Today's ending of the crafting run is brought to you by... Crack! Crack! It'll fuck you up. Welcome back. Sorry, I went to the wrong scene there for a second. <laughs> I would edit that part out, but I'm lazy as fuck when it comes to editing. Can't stand editing. I try to do everything in one cut as much as possible. I'm getting a slight pinched nerve in the lower back region. It's interfering with my sit up, so I'm letting it heal on its own a bit. Did a couple minor adjustments this week to help relieve some of the pressure. It's that same one where for years and years it used to bug me. Every time that would lean forward, I could feel it pinching. It was a fucking bitch. It didn't stop me from doing stuff, but man, it made everything always annoying and painful. And I was watching the chiropractor shows from China, how they showed this one woman in a village uses a spoon, and she uses the spoon to correct everyone's spine. And she was showing, it's like, yeah, you just press where it's hurting, and a lot of times you can get it to stop hurting so I was like wow and she was using the spoon because it would pr hurt her thumb sometimes for pressing so long or you could get better leverage pressing with the spoon you could push harder so one day I tried that I'm like man I'm tired of it hurting there all the time if this woman can just push it with the spoon and it corrects it, I should try it and see if I can fix it because I've been trying painkillers for years and it wasn't working good. We just take the edge off a little. I'd rather it just be gone and stop hurting altogether. Alright, monster truck print. Yeah, so one day I was in my apartment and I was doing my exercises and I'm like, man, I'm just going to press on my back with my thumb. Not to offer medical advice, but just kept pressing until I could feel exactly where it was stinging and then one of the presses I felt it pop and like it adjusted and then from that day forward it stopped hurting and it didn't hurt at all so I didn't even need the painkiller anymore I was like wow thank god I took that documentary's advice just tried pressing where it hurt I know it's probably not going to work for most people's situations but I was surprised at what just pressing could do But now, like I learned in the future, if you press sometimes, it doesn't always go well. Sometimes you press a spot that hurts and it makes it worse. So you got to be careful. Definitely advise getting a professional to do it. They probably have better insight where to press and where not to. Yeah, so now every time I have a back injury that lingers for like a week or two and it's still singing a little bit, I'll be like, man, should I adjust it or just leave it heal on its own? Most cases, I try to let it heal on its own because I don't want to adjust it wrong. And I'll just adjust it if it won't heal any further on its own. That's why my chiropractor was kind of surprised. He's like, for someone with scoliosis and three spots in your back, he's like, he's surprised I could reach a pain-free state. And I was going to kind of tell him, it's like, well, yeah, if I never did any stretches or pops, it would probably kill all the time. 
but I know a lot of the chiropractor moves already. Now for a long time what I did for a trick to help my back was I used a door frame and my job was to stand at the door and guard the entrance. So I was always standing at this door frame and I would just lean and press into the door frame when I had time, which was hours each day, and try to align it properly. Ornament device one. Not too bad. they are giving me more of that print. So yeah, that's what I was going for, is trying to adjust my back in a door frame. That actually did help for a while. Got to the point where I could stand up and my back wouldn't hurt at all. The door frame was able to set it straight enough. Now I always looked at the skeleton results or studies and they showed the Egyptian pharaohs and how, or even the Aztec ones, how they were fucking, the, their leaders' backs were always fucked, had scoliosis in multiple spots, yet they were still warriors. So it's like I always thought of that in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, no matter how bad your back gets, even these like crippled back people in the olden days were able to keep fighting. So human resilience is pretty good when it comes to your spine. Not to offer medical advice. <laughs> now when it comes to my medical advice for my back, I've seen my family doctor, I think, what is it, three chiropractors now? Or even more. One, two, three... Yeah, I guess there's three chiropractors. And a bunch of random specialists that I see. Man, the best doctor of all the ones I got was the one in Toronto. In the, the Jewish neighborhood. Man, the fucking Jewish doctors. I don't know if they're all that good, but... I heard that they were a bit better, so I'm like, man, let's go try it. It was funny too because I didn't even know that it was the Jewish neighborhood that I was going to, to until I got there. I was just looking up the best doctors I could find and so going to the best location brought me to them. Yeah, so knowledgeable. Yeah, when he's no longer a chiropractor in Toronto, man. That's going to be a sad day. Hopefully there's a few more like them. Praying. <laughs> you know, people sometimes say chiropractors don't do anything. It's like, well, wait until you're fucking crippled with a back injury. And then have someone just be able to press your back in one spot and be back to like full strength. And be like, oh, that didn't do anything. <laughs> Now, I get it, a chiropractor isn't a cure for everything with back pain, but... I would definitely go with one over not trying one. And I would always definitely go with trying a few of them to compare chiropractors to. It's like even dentists. It's good to go to a few dentists to compare those also. I noticed some of my dentists were against that. They're like, hey, you shouldn't be going to other dentists. It's like, once you're our patient, you're ours. And I'm like, well, I didn't really sign anything to say that. It's like, I'm just a patient and I get dental care wherever I need it. If I'm in a city and I need dental care, I'm not going to travel all the way back to the city that I was at to see the dentist. I'll just go to whatever dentist is nearby. Some of my dentists were okay with that, others were a little bit pissy. I can see why they're worried about, they don't want to catch anything from lab to lab or whatever, or office to office.
Uh, I've got one dentist that I see that's on the edge of town. Very modern office. Man, his, his work is top notch. But it's expensive. Then I have the dentist office right next to my house, which is medium prices and medium work. And then I have the family discount. We have a dentist in the family. And he'll do the work very cheap. And his work can be good and sometimes isn't good. So it's a hit or miss. Which is funny because sometimes his work is the best. <laughs> it's just other cases, uh, his x-ray machine isn't the greatest. So unless he's able to find it on his own. Which, if you're good at pointing it out to him, be like, hey man, there's a spot here that needs it. But if you can't point it out to him exactly, then you have to go to the dentist with better x-rays. I didn't even know that when it comes to MRI machines. Some MRI machines only cost a million bucks. Which seems like a lot, but it's like, man, if you can pile off like fucking 10 MRIs a day, you're raking in the profits, making like a hundred grand a month. So it won't take much to, well, monster truck wheel, pay off that MRI machine. But some hospitals have really high end MRI machines that would cost way more than a million. Better resolutions. Never even thought to ask that eh? when you're going in for an MRI test. You'd be like, hey man, what's the resolution of your scanner? <laughs> it's like, what's the point in going and getting an MRI at some place that's low resolution? Depends if you want them to find what's wrong or if you want them to hide what's wrong. <laughs> If you want him to hide what's wrong, go to the low resolution places. <laughs> like, yeah, we got an MRI, everything looks great. <laughs> so the government insurance agencies, that's where they send you. It's like, oh, we can't even read this MRI. Perfect. At least the government agencies are somewhat looking out to save money. I'm sure they had to save a lot for this situation. I don't know how it's working when people catch the virus at work. Does the government insurance cover that? They usually fight everything. <laughs> Now, I was thinking that'd be an interesting meme that I was sharing today on Facebook. Make it mandatory that if they do lockdowns and declare some businesses unessential, that every government worker has to be declared unessential so that they can experience what it's like when they're declaring other businesses unessential so that the actual government employees can see what it's like. They're like, oh shit, maybe we shouldn't be declaring businesses unessential. When you have no income, it sucks. I get if businesses want to shut down for periods of time and sterilize their buildings or whatever. But to force businesses to shut down completely, that's fucked. Especially in America. America is supposed to be the place that's safe for businesses.
or the safest. It's like no place is safe for businesses these days. Governments are always coming up with some crazy new taxes. Kill all the businesses. They can't generate enough profits on their own that they have to tax the businessman. And it's kind of a shame that Elon Musk wasn't able to organize his celebrity and money and influence to come up with a, a political party. Would have been neat to see him run Rock Tech Windscreen. The evil genius party. <laughs> Oh, Space Thruster 34. That's what I'm talking about. Man, that was back to back prints. Almost the same pattern as the Global. I like that. I was just about to bitch and say that I hardly got any Space Thrusters this run. It is still a bit on the low side. Compared to some of the epic runs I had with Space Thrusters. Oh fuck, you should have seen it. Some of the Space Thruster prints runs I had, I'd land on a planet and I'd get like 2,000 clicks. In one run. It's like, can you imagine? That was back when I was selling them for 7,000. I was like, shit, I should just keep doing this trick all the time. But then I started to get backed up and didn't sell the prints fast enough be stuck with prints filled in my storage and not selling anything god that Sleipner print I had it for a long time uh, let's check and see what's happening with the prints They gave me three shit ones. Well, windscreen, Spanish flag, chair. I organized my prints again last night so you guys could see them better. We got the gun ear and slept near. Gun ear, we're almost at 100. Slept near, we're almost at 300, which is fucking unreal, right? That's a good haul, slept near. Yeah, that's how it's going to do too. I'm going to open the calculator and I'm going to run through a little bit of them so I can show you guys. Fucking dry skin bugging me again. Alright, 2.96. That's what we got for Sleipner's. Well, times it by 7,000% because that's pretty close to what I got at auction. 6,999. So that's 207 ped just in the fucking Sleipners. Alright, gun year is 100. So 2000. Point nine eight times 2000. Alright, so that's 20 ped for the helicopter prints. Oh, here we are, Bonzo Slim Jim. So it's sitting at around 13,000 markup, but I like to push it up to 30,000 on auction. And I have sold it for that, so that's what I'll calculate it to it. Because I'm not going to sell it cheap. It's the, the all-time best loot I can get. Right, so fuck, where were we? 290. Times 30,000%. Holy fuck. 
So that comes out to 870 ped. Just for the fucking Sleipner clicks. Or no, the Bonzo Slim Jims. So I don't know guys, it's looking like two of the stacks, just the Bonzo Slim Jims and the Sleipners are going to push a thousand ped and loot just in those prints. Then I'll have all the other ones still. Alright, so we got the speed bike, 125 clicks. Hoverboard, 167. The wet ski water column thing. God, I wish we could get the parts for it. The Bonzo Slim Jim. The PRX, we got a pretty good stack of them. Well, Ornament 2, we just got another one. The biggest stack they gave us, oh, it's Sub Warps. Well, that's pretty sweet. 11 ped, holy shit. That was pretty close to a global. So the PRX Roadster Monster Truck Wheel, holy fuck. This is amazing. Man, yeah, maybe Beamer's giving us some good luck from above, right? He's like, hey Lee, here's some prints for you. It's like, thanks Beamer. Happy birthday, man. <laughs> yeah, he would have been 95 today. It's kind of sad. At least he made it to 94. That's a good life, right? Man, he lived right to the end. Still playing Entropia. <laughs> Alright, so Bonzo Slim Jams, wet steering. Oh, yeah, that's where we're at. Pure X, 413. It's a shame the market value is not the greatest. 1,000. Maybe we could get 2,000 if we really pushed it. But still, that's not a bad stack of them. 400. Monster Truck Wheel, 369. That's a pretty good stack. 3,000% markup, so I could push it to four or 5,000 markup. When you look at how many clicks, fuck man, 369. That's pretty good. Let's do it even at 3,000. Now it is kind of bad luck to start totaling up your prints before your run's over, but it'll give me something to talk about for this part of the show. Alright, 369 times 3000% markup. Yeah, it's 110. So that's 110 just for the monster truck wheels. Then we got the monster truck prints themselves, 154 clicks of those. The Vamp 43. Horny Devil Monster Truck 177 clicks. It's pretty good for monster trucks this time. There's the Space Thrusters. They pushed pushed just over a hundred clicks on this run. So you can see that's why it takes a long time to save up those space thruster ones, right? Like if you want a thousand click print to sell, it's going to take you maybe 10 runs at the thousand ped each. So you're looking at a 10,000 ped crafting run to, in order to save up a thousand clicks of the space thruster. Unless you can get lucky and hit a planet where they just start giving you space thrusters, but maybe we'll have that happen in one episode. Sub warp, we're at fucking 550. Dear God. I wish they were worth at least a thousand. And we can get 50 ped from that. Right, so the energy source, just 40 clicks. Ornaments 1 and 2. They gave us more of the 2, but almost caught us up with the ornament 1s today. Which had the better price? I think ornament 2. Yeah, we want ornament two ones. So it's good if we have more of those. But yeah, and then the other thing I sorted out was these prints. Here's how many Spanish flags. Here's how many Polish. Here's how many Romanians. So it looks like the Polish got the lead by one. 
steering rod, disc brakes, lamp attachments, radiators, wind screens. So if anyone needs these prints and wants to come to my birthday party, just ask me for one and I'll see if I can hook you up. I've got quite a few extra. So this is where it gets into the better ones, the Raw Tech, Rock Tech radiators. Check the market value on those. They're anywhere between five and 20 ped. So getting two of those is like 10 ped. Rock Tech lamp, it's around seven ped. So three of those is 21. Steering rod, it's around 10 ped. So it's another 10 for that. Combustor is around seven to 10 ped. So two of those. Yeah, so say 10 for each. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So almost 80 ped in just those Rock Tech prints. So when you think when you do one of these th thousand cred pa or ped crafting runs and you fall behind, what is it? 200 maybe even 300 ped on one of the crafting runs if you can get a stack of blueprints like this gives you a chance to sell what you're getting and make your money back right you have to organize these with the rest I think one was the Spanish right The hell, no chair frame. I have to keep moving. I thought we had a chair frame in here somewhere. All right, walk rock tech windscreen. See if we were got one of those. Oh, we didn't, eh? Yeah. yeah, so you can see I got almost all the Rock Tech prints I needed to complete a Rock Tech collection in 1,000 ped crafting run. Well, I shouldn't just be saying a thousand. This one was more like a 1,300 run, I think. I don't know if anyone was keeping track how much I was spending there, but it was quite a bit. I splurged a bit because we had the, the extra money that I made from selling the prints. So I hope this gives everyone an idea what it's like to be a vehicle crafter, to do the low end vehicle prints and just fish the pool to try to get as many prints as I can see if any of them are decent you can see the pool that I'm fishing in on Rocktropia seems to be a little bit better than some of the other pools that I tried with this trick remember if you're going on a fishing trip one of the most key things is to go fishing somewhere where there's actually fish in the pond right It's like joining an online dating service in a small town up north. It's going to be slim pickings in that pond. Better to date in Toronto. <laughs> Sad as that is. <laughs> this is not dating advice. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe online up north dating is the best. <laughs> now it would be a dream come true to have my place up north finished like that. All I'd really need is a small place. As long as it has decent plumbing, running water. 
That'd be fucking sweet. Working washroom. Like fucking luxury. <laughs> My episode of Cribs would be like, look, running water. <laughs> Now, right now, my host is so abandoned, it's pretty bad. I'm gonna have to demolish it soon. Not where I'm staying now, but my place up north. My brother did say he wants to demolish the place we're in now. Mainly because it's a hundred years old, there'd be a lot to fix. Yeah, I would have just fixed my place up north, but it was already begun the process of demolition and it was already too far gone to come back. One of the walls, main structural walls, was caving in. It's probably caved in pretty bad by now. I haven't been up there in a year or two. Yeah, it's so weird buying a house that still had the belongings of the old people in it and have to demolish it all. Imagine a demolition company, man. I gotta find a cheap deal on that. It's gonna be a pretty penny. That's all I have to do, find the price on demolition. Hopefully it'll include re-leveling the site so it'll be prepared for the next building. Spanish flag. Fuck. At least it's a ped though. Alright, I was looking for one print to end the show on so we'll end it on that one. We'll call this the, the Christmas episode. That was good. Nice of it to open on the screen. I didn't want it to show. <laughs> Alright, let's check the left screen. Alright, so the Bitcoin Casino is at 135,110. Let's give it a roll. 135,122. Woohoo! So we're getting pretty close to the main goals for it. Sweet. Hey, there's someone here I should say hi to. Oh, I thought it was Big Daddy for a sec, but it's this guy. But I should say hi to him too. not make this the massively online role-playing game where we're always just alone <laughs> never communicating with any other players the hell is going on man why can't I equip when I try to hit that button he scanned me should I scan him back the scanning war oh he's a color oh he's got some rings Velocity jumpsuit, St. Patrick's Day hat, that's cool. And the maze axe, this guy's rocking. He's got low agility so he can still sell sweat, but his items are maxed out. Oh. Let's ask him what he's up to. What could it be? <laughs> hey, well, we'll come back with the details of what he was up to when we get back. Next episode. Oh, he's checking stuff.
Speaking of checking stuff, check this stuff out. <laughs> we got Patreon, Society6, we're finishing quick as my specialty merch. Comes on t-shirts and bed sheets, very popular with the ladies. Hydro TV is the place they'll pay to watch videos like YouTube, except they split ad revenue between the creators and the viewers. Schwagbucks is a place they'll give you discount shopping online, similar to like Air Miles building up, except you can cash it out with Amazon gift cards and you can use it on any online stores. Game Kit is a place I'll pay to be a gamer. I encourage you to try Entropia Partners out for that as well. And then free Bitcoin, which I just did the spin. And the Show More button, you just click that, it'll blow, it'll open. And you'll see all these links there, so you can just click them directly instead of having to search it. And then it helps my referral links out by doing that. Oh yeah, and the Virtual Mate Sex Machine is for adults and men only, but if ladies need a sex machine, they know who to call. And just to prove that this device is for real, they sent me one. <laughs> so if people are looking to get the discount on it, I don't know if it's still the discount. When I got it, it was half price. It might be full price now, but maybe you can still get the discount. I don't know. And with the way lockdowns are going, you never know, right? <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> right, anyways, yeah, so let's see. Speaking of, oh yeah, Entropia Zine. That's what I was going to say. If you want to check out and put in the comments if you want to see more Entropia Zine. I don't think they've released anything for a little while now, so it'd be cool to get some new content from them. And same with Raven J, it'd be nice to get some new content from her. And yeah, hopefully every, all the Entropian community continues to make content. I know uh, Avalon's making some and a bunch of other players still are. Oh yeah, Bonnie and a few others. Yeah, a whole bunch I forget to mention. Alright, so let's see, if we happen to get any refiner in your vaporizer and it tastes like shit, give the show a dislike, but if it doesn't happen, you can help with a like, I really appreciate it, just make sure you never buy the products from my sponsor, because it will ruin your life. Bye for now, everyone. <laughs> my head, what is wrong with it? <laughs>